Thank you for coming to Productive Corporation's Technical Snapshot. Today we're going to be looking at Kaspersky's MDM and mobile security. Now let's look at the mobile devices. And from a mobile device perspective, we're going to focus in on two aspects. One is MDM, more mobile device management. The other is mobile security. Now, strangely enough, a lot of people have associated those two to be the same thing. In actuality, they are two separate items. MDM and a lot of MDM products that are out on the market do have some security processes associated to them. But they're not true security products. They're more exactly as they're described, device management products. What we have is we have something very similar in the MDM component. We actually have two processes within our MDM component. The first is iOS, where we're going to be able to build profiles uh, that can be deployed to the iOS platform. We do have security products for the iOS as well uh, in the form of web, browse, web browser support, web protection, uh, and uh, profile uh, security and containerization. The other is Exchange. And within the Exchange component, um, we can build, we have a direct connection into the Exchange environment where we can build Exchange Active Sync uh, profiles that include password protection, that include encryption, that include some of the features that you would normally see using it in the Exchange environment. Now, why is this important? Because some of the features that are in Exchange are also in the mobile security product. But they all obviously have a, a reliance on Exchange, whereas we do not. And let's take a look at that. I'm going to jump up here to my mobile devices, and let's take a look at my mobile device protection policy. Now, with the mobile, like I said before, this is not you reliant. restate that, Marty? So you're saying sure. that this doesn't rely on? Yes. It can be integrated with Exchange or it can operate separate from. Is absolutely. that correct? Yes, absolutely. Okay. What, what you have with the, the Exchange ActiveSync product is you have a number of security processes, password protection, device wiping, uh, device management, where you can block things such as the Bluetooth or the Wi-Fi or the browser. And that's all done through Exchange. So we have that connector directly into it that gives us that capability of designing those profiles and building them out accordingly. But that those security processes are relying on Exchange. What if you don't have Exchange? Maybe you have a hosted environment for email. Or maybe you have uh, an internal system that's not using Exchange. Well, this is again, goes back to why we have a great security product. Because our security product, which is Kaspersky Security for Mobile, it is separate from the MDM, but is integrated into it from a deployment standpoint, which means we can deploy the security product using MDM. The security product has the same capabilities without the need for an exchange environment to utilize it, Okay, where I can come into the device managing, for example, and I can disable the Wi-Fi, the Bluetooth, and the camera without the need of having to go through that exchange active sync process or that iPhone process. Okay. I gotcha. So they are they are separate in nature. And this is the, unfortunately a lot of times this is where some confusion comes in because there are NDM products out on the market that do utilize some of these security features. But again, you're relying on something larger, you know, or another component that's required. Uh, a lot of people said the same thing about some of the uh, anti-malware products for the enterprise environment, where they, it had to be integrated into Active Directory. We do not. My, to give you an example, my environment that I came from when I was a customer way back when, I had Active Directory, I had Novell eDirectory, and I had a Linux environment that were all working independently. So in order for me to be able to manage all three environments, I needed a security solution that could connect to all three. And there was only one at the time. It happens to be the same one that I work for today, which is Kaspersky. So I have that capability because of the flexibility of the product. Same thing holds true at the mobile device level. I can use this independently, or I can use it within an Active Directory environment or an Exchange environment. Yeah. When, we, when we look at the, the, the focus of mobile security, though, this is where it's very unique. The physical endpoints, like your desktops and laptops, are really broken up from a security standpoint into two areas, the scanning tasks and the update tasks. You obviously have some policies associated to each. The nice thing here is, as opposed to the physical environment where you'd have separate tasks for scanning, separate tasks for updating, 
you actually have it all under one umbrella with mobile security. We have a scanning task built into the policy where it's going to go out and look at all these things and can be scheduled accordingly. Same thing for the update task. The nice thing about the update task is that now you've taken into consideration those users, or especially in a BYOD situation or personal device situation, that they may not have a, uh, an unlimited data plan or they may not have uh, you know, funding to be able to furnish roaming mode type of updating. So I have the capabilities of either allowing or denying that access to an update if they're in roaming mode. I'm going to take into consideration that obviously if they're paying the bill, we want to make sure that they're not getting an enormous bill simply because I'm sending an update down. Yep. So, and I also have the capability of creating an update server source, meaning I don't have to send them to Kaspersky every time. I can send them directly to my environment to get those updates to make them quicker, to make them uh, more reliable to a sense in that they can update from one single source, and I've made sure that those updates are up to date and functioning. Uh, so, so I do hey, have these. Marty, yeah. can you do a partial wipe, say part of it's corporate data and they want to let them, maybe their photos are theirs, can mm -hmm. I do a partial, you know, I mean I'm securing the phone, but I can do a partial wipe, say the Outlook or, or whatever, the, you know, their calendar and their email and contacts. Absolutely. This, and you brought right, you, you, great segue right into it. Within the security product, we're not just focusing on the anti-malware component. We're also going to be looking at specific anti-theft types of situations. Data wipe is a great example of that, where we can do, uh, I can enable the data wipe and I can change the settings to where I would do all data or just corporate data through containerization. So if I have, for example, you brought up a great point with email. If, if the email component is part of my containerization, then I have the ability to wipe that clean without affecting any of the yep. personal data. Okay? Yeah, so you're going to wipe the, you'd wipe all the, whatever that exchange server's name, right? We'll call it corporate, corporate exchange server. That's the one mailbox. That one gets wiped mm -hmm. out. Your Gmail and uh, Yahoo accounts stay. Exactly. Exactly. Yep. Well, and all yeah. of that's associated to that container. Uh, the same thing holds true with the, the device locking. With device locking, if, we, if for example, um, you know, someone comes into the IT department and says, hey, my phone's been stolen, or I think I, I think I lost my phone somewhere, I can immediately protect the data on it by simply locking it. It hasn't been, quote, unquote, officially stolen. Maybe it's just been misplaced. I can go ahead and lock it at that point. And then if, if, the, if somebody does recover it, we can actually customize a message that says the owner's phone number is this. You know, call them in the office or contact the IT department at this particular number. So I do have the, I do have the capability of doing that. Um, I can perform a GPS location, uh, locator. If GPS is enabled on the device, I can say send the device coordinates to a particular email address, which could be the IT manager or the user itself. Now, the nice thing about that is you can now tell the user, hey, go down to the cafeteria and go pick up your phone. You left it on the table. You know, you have that type of, yep. uh, of scenario where you can actually empower them to go out and find it. Uh, but let's assume that for a minute that it is stolen. And the, the phone is stolen, so there's data contained on the phone, but the SIM has been changed, which means now they have, if they change the SIM and we're not protecting the data, now they have access to that data. So this is where our enable SIM watch comes in. For those phones that have a SIM, we can actually identify it and say, okay, what's the, send me the new number, send a, a message to this particular email address. But I don't want SIMs changed on my phones without me knowing about it. So I want to lock the device as well. So in the process of doing that, we're performing two main anti-theft functions here. The device lock, as well as the SIM watch. So now I've, I've taken care of the needs under those conditions to make sure that the, the data that I have on the device is protected. Cool. Hey, Marty, we got about five minutes left until uh, we come to the top of the hour, so just to give you a heads up there. Oh, I appreciate that. Thank you. Um, obviously, you know, I can talk for hours. I, I just, you know, you just got to love the product. 
Uh, and, and, you know, and I, you know, I, in all honesty, I love talking security. I love talking about managing environments like this. I came from such a large environment myself. Um, so we'll go ahead and finish it up with just a couple more pieces. Uh, one that we see a lot in school type settings, uh, but we also see it in, in the form of the family setting as well, where we have teenagers or, or you know, obviously young people that have their own phone. And we really want to continue to protect them from web resources, just as we would in our, in our schools uh, on a desktop or a laptop. So what we have within the network settings is the ability to categorize web protection, just like we do in our web control for our physical endpoints. And I can actually go in and block specific types of websites that have been categorized. Now, these categories are actually maintained by the same technology that I talked about earlier, which was the Kaspersky Security Network, or the KSN. It, it includes all of the web resources to be able to do web categorization, along with anti-malware protection as well. So I have that capability. And then we talked about application control and containerization. Within the application control, I can go ahead and set up blocked apps and allowed apps on a particular device. And I can detect and maintain a higher security level for devices that have been rooted or jailbreaked. In that particular case, I can lock the containers protecting the data, I can clear the corporate data, or I can clear all of the data if I find a device that has been rooted or jailbreaked, which gives me one added layer of security. Because we all know what happens when a jailbreak uh, occurs on a phone, while there's more at, uh, features available to the phone at that point, the vulnerability risk is also in, uh, is also heightened. So it's important that we make sure that we at least know about the devices and then make some specific provisioning around that. This is definitely something you want to consider if you're going to a BYOD situation. You want to make sure that those devices are not going to impact your environment where a data breach could occur. And then, of course, finally, uh, the containers are actually going to be tied to the MDM seamless integration, where we can go in and identify specific containers with specific applications. And then if we do a data wipe, it would, it would affect just the containers that are shown in this particular list. Uh, I don't actually have a device connected to it today, so uh, that's why the, the, the list is blank. But I do have that capability, including the encrypted uh, save data. Thanks again for coming to view exclusive content on ProductiveCorp.com, your security and storage software expert for mid-sized companies. If you have questions about pricing or licensing your specific environment, give us a call or request a quote on ProductiveCorp.com.